All right. So now it is time for my t my taste of a home. Uh, all right, I'm gonna talk you through the plate before I start eating. Um, we have, let me rotate it towards the camera. We've got uh, fried chicken. It's all downhill from there. So the rice is cooked in ketchup uh, and <laughs> it has uh, carrot and raisins, which I did not expect. And I'm gonna try it real quick. I remember growing up in a small town in Virginia. It was the kind of place where we'd play baseball in the open field until the sunset, where everyone knew each other's name, and where mom was always in the kitchen, making our favorite American fried rice. All right, I'm just kidding. This is a Thai dish, and it's completely ridiculous. It's literally rice braised in ketchup and garnished with the stuff you'd find in an eight-year-old's dream lunchbox. It feels like an SNL sketch come to life. Now, I grew up in America, but even in my small hometown, we had plenty of access to Thai food. However, inside Thailand, this is the only dish named after my country. So we set out to the old part of Bangkok near the Imperial Palace to begin our quest to understand not just American fried rice, but maybe also gain some self-awareness into what the rest of the world must think of me. Challenge accepted. We would be diving into the deep end of the ketchup filled swimming pool to find answers, and we'd follow the road wherever it might take us. Oh, this is going to be a long day. This is Hia Tai Ki, and it's a Bangkok institution. And it's the first stop on our quest to understand how American fried rice came about. This place has been serving diner-style food since 1952, just north of Bangkok's Chinatown. Now, that's around the time that American fried rice first appeared in the historical record. And if there's going to be any hard evidence of how this dish might have evolved, if it did evolve from anything else... The odds are good we can find out about it here. All right, let me backtrack for a second. If you've never been to Asia and you're watching this in the West somewhere, you probably know about our obviously inauthentic versions of some foreign foods, like, for example, American Chinese. What you might never have considered is that it works both ways. And there's an entire subset of food in Asia that's, well, I mean, it's not what mom used to make. makes me sad is that this is the only local Thai food with the name America. But our food culture is it's pretty awesome. Like, it's hard to find a bad meal in America. I love like American diner food. I opened two American diners in, in China before we came here. I just don't want this to be what my country is known for. Let me explain why we're here at this specific restaurant. First, it serves American fried rice. Second, it dates back to 1952, which makes it the oldest place we could find that still serves the dish. And last, and most importantly, this is a Chinese Thai diner, or more specifically, a very early version of a Hong Kong tea house, or cha-san-ting. 
You might have noticed in the montage that there were a bunch of so-called Western foods that come from Hong Kong. And those dishes emerged from a very specific type of place, which is a good way to start to understand one of the ways this genre of food started to emerge. Basically, Hong Kong was an English colony, and there were loads of Western restaurants, but they were posh and high-end and way out of the price range of the average non-colonist. So a few enterprising local businesses around the end of the 1940s decided to recreate this snobby foreign food using cheap ingredients and make it accessible to the masses. One of the dishes that became popular in the very first Chatsan Tings was sort of a diner take on a classic English breakfast, scaled down to something like this. This dish, which is now usually called American breakfast, is popular all across Asia. And our first theory is that places like this, when they showed up around Bangkok's Chinatown, brought this with them, where the toast got replaced with more popular fried rice, and there you go, American fried rice. So our guess is that American fried rice came to Thailand through places like this. Cantonese diners opened just around the start of the heyday of Canto Western food. In this case, the quote, American breakfast, but with rice replacing the toast. Well, let me rephrase. That was our guess until we actually tasted the dish. But no, these things have nothing in common except the garnishes. This is something totally different. It's like a ketchup dish where the rice is just a filler. Actually, as it turns out, our theory was kind of right, but in reverse. Places like this in Thailand started selling American fried rice sometime around the 1960s, and businessmen and immigrants actually brought it back with them to Hong Kong, where it got absorbed into Cha Tsun Ting cuisine and is still sold today as a dish called Western Fried Rice. So we're 0 for 1, but this did feel like a good start. And maybe the problem is that we were looking for connections to a dish that's actually supposed to be British. What about those Asian Western creations that are allegedly American? Is there anything that ties all of these things together? Like a common ancestor or a thread we can unravel to see if it leads us to American fried rice? Well, as it turns out, there is. Now, Western dishes arrived in Asia from a lot of different paths. But in the case of American stuff, or at least dishes referred to as American, those seem to show up around the US military. For example, there's a ton of American influence in Filipino food, where fried chicken is ubiquitous and Spam Salog is a breakfast favorite. Spam, of course, entered the national lexicon around the time of World War II when the country faced meat shortages. There were also food shortages in Korea after the war there in the 1950s, and for quite a while, people who lived around American military bases relied on surplus food stocks donated or left behind by U.S. soldiers. That's how we ended up with this, army stew, where a whole bunch of processed rations would get tossed in a pot with kimchi and other local ingredients. Now, even though the American military never fought inside Thailand, there were a large number of bases in the country used by U.S. troops during the Vietnam War, with Americans arriving as early as 1961, just in time to track with the appearance of American fried rice. Now, it's unlikely that American fried rice had anything to do with food shortages in Thailand. I mean, those shortages actually meant that there wasn't much rice available at all. But there is a theory that an enterprising local businessman came up with this dish to market to American troops stationed in the country. And the idea of making something to sell to U.S. soldiers does have precedent. Because around the same time as American fried rice started showing up in Thailand, business was booming on a tiny island in the south of Japan. The island was called Okinawa, and the dish was taco rice. So we've got cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, and I think this is ground beef and pork. Yeah, it's, that's like a fast food taco, that's amazing. 
And then it's supposed to be, it says on the menu, to mix it with the homemade salsa. So I'm gonna just put a whole bunch of salsa on top and let's see what this all tastes like together. How have I not had this before? How is this flavor profile different to a typical Okinawan dish? Like, what do you have on your other plate? Uh, this is a taco, and this is Japanese food. <laughs> Now, when we showed you American or British breakfast at the last place, the idea was to take something foreign and adapt it for local customers. But in this case, it's something local, donburi, or a Japanese rice bowl, adapted to sell to foreigners as something resembling a taste of home. This dish is about 40 years old and was first sold at a couple of shops right outside the gates of the U.S. military base in Okinawa, and it's still wildly popular with American personnel there today. In Japan, this dish was first credited to a chef and restaurant owner named Matsuzo Gibo. In Thailand, under this theory, the American fried rice inventor is said to be a Thai Chinese cook known by his nickname Gojek, who supposedly came up with the dish to sell to troops based in the border city of Udon Thani. On the surface, this does make sense. But there is one main difference between taco rice and American fried rice. There's tons of recorded history of American soldiers returning from Okinawa with stories about this. You can probably find somebody to ask who knows somebody who's tried this dish. But there's no record I can find of troops coming back home and saying anything about this. So either it was a failure, which doesn't seem to be the case because obviously it's still here today, or the Americans weren't actually the true targets at all. American fried rice was more likely created for Thai customers. It must have been something where a local dish as ubiquitous as fried rice was turned into an exotic foreign specialty with a name meant to conjure images of Times Square and Fenway Park and the Grand Canyon. And why not? America in the years after World War II was a global ideal, a booming economy and a culture spread far and wide through Hollywood movies and television shows. But if that's the case, then I'll admit, it hurts just a little to think that this is the taste that local chefs associated with my home country. And that brings up another point if we're going to solve this puzzle. If someone in Asia in the 1950s or 60s wanted to create an American dish, why did it have to be this? There was one way for us to find out but it would require the hardest thing I've ever had to do on this channel. There would be no simple toast and egg or delicious taco rice for me. I'd avoided the hard stuff, but if I really wanted answers, I'd have to stare evil right in the eyes and come face to face with ketchup spaghetti. All right, so this is probably what I've been most stressed about since we started filming today. You know my feelings on ketchup. I will admit that what this dish sounded like in print versus what it looks like is, this is a little bit more encouraging. It actually looks like something that, you know, is more familiar than it might taste. Let's see how this, this is Naporitan, my first taste ever. All right, forgive me if I get a little philosophical for a moment. I have this thing I call the two-line biography. Like, if you're trying to describe someone and the person you're talking to doesn't know who you're talking about, what do you say to describe them? Like, you know, Johnny, tall guy, doesn't smell good. Or, come on, Joanne, blonde hair, always talking about her cat. It's a fun exercise because it shows how little self-awareness we all actually have. We all think our own two-line bio would be, like... You know, Adam, normal guy, does normal things. It's a shock when we have to confront the truth, which is never how we'd hope to be seen. It's hard, but sometimes necessary, to see yourself through someone else's eyes. This brings me to the things that go into whatever is referred to as American food in Asia. There's a common thread here, and it usually involves some combination of a few ingredients. 
the most common being ketchup, spam, and hot dogs. It pains me as an American chef who views my own country as a spectrum of tastes and flavors, from Texas brisket to Maryland crab cakes and everything in between. But to someone who's never been to the U.S., well, I guess that's not how we're perceived. It's more like, you know, American food, ketchup and spam. I wanted to understand how this came to be what defined my country. Was it the dominance of our fast food chains? Was it Hollywood movies? Some Soviet disinformation propaganda campaign? Within the category of American foods invented in Asia, no country has fine-tuned the art form better than the Japanese. We came to this restaurant for Naporitan, ketchup spaghetti. But that wasn't nearly the only thing served here labeled as American. All right, so something is underneath what looks like cheese and bechamel sauce, and then there's a hamburger patty with more cheese melted on this. So this, I actually don't know what I'm, what I'm finding. Ooh, that's creamier than I expected. Oh yeah, that's macaroni. I mean, all right, that's not not delicious. The reason we came here has nothing to do with the dishes themselves, as much as the time period in which they were invented. See, these items, or at least some version of them, can be traced all the way back to the 1800s. In the late 19th century, Japan was in the middle of a period called the Meiji Restoration. That's when the country industrialized and introduced tons of foreign foods into the culture, usually sight unseen and based mostly on reputation or written descriptions. This became a category of Japanese cuisine called yoshoku, and while yoshiku dishes didn't emerge all at once, the common denominator connecting all of it was actually pretty simple. They were all created not around anything known overseas, but rather based on whatever imported ingredients happened to be sold in Japan. And when it came to American stuff, at the time, first and foremost, that meant ketchup. By looking at the ingredients exported from the United States to Asia, you can begin to track how allegedly American dishes emerged all throughout the continent. White bread came as early as the late 19th century when Rumford baking powder arrived from Rhode Island. Miracle Whip arrived here in the 1930s. And the big boom came in the decade that followed World War II when Spam exploded in the 1940s as an alternative to expensive meat. Craft singles showed up around the beginning of the 1950s, and hot dogs came a few years later. And while you do have dishes like ketchup spaghetti that show us the roots of this food culture, in general, whatever was anywhere around the 1960s appears to have played a pretty big role in defining what's considered modern cuisine today. That's when restaurants started to boom and chains started to grow and families on the go in a developing world started to eat out more and more. Now, not all of the ingredients I mentioned were available across the whole continent all at once. And in Thailand, at the time that American fried rice was probably invented, we know that exported American ketchup and hot dogs were sold here. And if that's all there was in the average grocery store and someone wanted to create a dish that was American, well, what else would they use? And interestingly enough, the idea of using whatever happened to be on hand to make something meant to evoke a foreign culture for the purpose of making money is actually something that hits closer to home than you might think. Yeah, I think my go-to order for a while, I was like ordering Chinese delivery pretty frequently. It was like General Tso's chicken, Mushu pork, uh, what else did I used to get? Beef and broccoli, of course. Um, sometimes I'd change it up and the orange chicken would replace the General Tso's chicken. Actually, I'm kind of curious. What do, you, what do you think was made first? American fried rice or, or just kind of, or American Chinese food? So American Chinese food as a category like this started about the same time as American fried rice. That's like 1950s. Um, but the idea of like Americanized Chinese food was a hundred years earlier. Um, so the dish chop suey, right? The story as I know it is that um, in the gold rush in California in the late 1840s, that's when a lot of Chinese immigrants came over to the US and 
uh, they would open Chinese restaurants, but it's usually like the the gold miners, the men who had no idea how to cook, who would start these Chinese restaurants aimed at local people in California. Uh, and they would just take whatever they could find because there were no Chinese supermarkets or anything like that. And they just throw it all in a wok and call it Chinese food. And that's the dish that's called chop suey. So American Chinese food came from Chinese immigrants to America using whatever local ingredients they could find and adapting the flavors to the local palate. Yoshiku Japanese food came from Japanese chefs using whatever American ingredients they could find and selling it to local customers as a representation of Japan's economic progress. American Okinawa food came from stuff the locals thought American soldiers would want to eat. And American Korean and Filipino food came from stuff the soldiers introduced that became popular domestically. Hong Kong cha ting food came about as a way to make real Western dishes affordable to the general public. And Thailand's American fried rice came from, well, to be honest, Maybe the most plausible theory is that this came about completely by accident. So there is one more theory about the origin of American fried rice. This one starts at Don Muang Airport in Bangkok in 1954. There was a restaurant inside the airport called Rachitani, and according to legend, this is where a cook named Suripan Maniwat made the first plate of American fried rice. Now, the short version is that the restaurant served the public, but it also made in-flight meals. And they'd made a bunch of breakfast trays of fried chicken, egg, and ham for a flight to the U.S. But then the flight got canceled, and the restaurant was stuck with a whole bunch of stuff they couldn't sell. So the cook just added some ketchup to their normal fried rice, called it an American dish, and the rest, as they say, is history. Out of all the origin stories of the dish, this might be the most likely. Because sometimes, no matter how deep you might dig looking to find answers about something, the truth could just as easily be nothing more than a total fluke, albeit one that could only happen under just the right confluence of circumstances, the availability of certain ingredients, the popularity of a certain culture, the right place, right time, good luck of a dish created just when restaurants were starting to boom and customers wanted to try new things. And that is the story of American Fried Rice. Subscribe to the channel for more from OTR and follow the links below to keep up with us on Instagram and Facebook. Jasper, you've, uh, you've never been to America, right? No, I, not really. Do you want to try what American food tastes like? Wait, really? Okay. Yeah, 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 give me the camera. It's not the worst thing in the world, you know? It's food, I mean... Yeah, no, this is so heavy in ketchup.